Before I talk about the five things you should get about a gimbal, I want to talk about one thing that beginner filmmakers should know. I'm a beginner filmmaker and I bought a gimbal before I bought a lot of these things and I made a lot of mistakes thinking about movements and stuff and just watching Peter McKinnon a bit too much. Now I'm not saying Peter McKinnon is bad, I'm just saying that there's a lot of things about filmmaking and cinematic that people misunderstand. I think the thing about cinematic is that people just think visually appealing is cinematic. No, I think cinematic is... It's, it's, it's like something you should watch in a cinema. It's a movie, it's, it's something that draws you in, it's interesting. And what draws you in is always the story. So you gotta start with the story. And when something is cinematic visually, it should be driven by the story with motivation. Be it to world build so that the story is more enriching. Be it to show more about the character through beautiful visuals so that you know you really pay attention to said visuals and then you understand what's going on better in the story. Uh, it's all should be driven by the story. You know, gimbals are great for camera movement and if you're doing corporate work, doing real estate vi videos and you're doing jobs, right? and you need the gimbal, get the gimbal. But if you're a beginner filmmaker who's trying to get into filmmaking, filmmaking, and trying to get into filmmaking exactly, um, stop watching Peter McKinnon and listening to him talking about cinematic camera movements. It's, it's, it's not, he's not a bad YouTuber, it's just, it's just, it's just not the first thing you should really care about. Uh, there's so many good filmmakers out there, Quentin Tarantino, Wes Innocent, they have a lot of locked off shots. Sure, they move their camera once in a while, but when they move it, it's motivated by intention. It, actually, every good director that ever existed only moves their camera when needed. Look at 1917, the whole camera, the whole movie, the camera was, it, it, it was filmed to look like a one take, so the camera was pretty much always moving instead because it couldn't cut between different camera angles. When they moved the camera, it was with intention. Uh, there's this nice video about blocking in 1917 where they adapted making everything look like a one take to you know compensate for the lack of editing. It was, it's insane, you know. They move the camera because they want to show something, all right? They move the camera because they want to introduce something. They move the camera because they want to show context. They shake the camera because they want to add emotion. They move the camera quickly because they want to show the scale. They change to a wide angle because they want to show the scale. Things like that, right? Things like that are way more important, all right, than cinematic movements. Framing, blocking, lighting, story, performances, pacing, editing, audio, all these things are so much more important in making something cinematic than just movement. So for the $500 you spend on a gimbal, you can improve on those things by spending that money on better gear that I'm gonna talk about in this list video or by spending money on actors and props so that you can shoot and practice because practice is what makes you improve and uh, that's what I need to do more of personally, frankly. This is why I'm recommending things over a gimbal. I'm not hating on cinematic movement. I'm not hating on move camera movement. I just believe that there's a lot of things you should improve before you care about camera movement. Okay, so let's get on with the top five list right now. Spicy weather. That is spicy weather if you ask me. My legs are getting a suntan when I'm making this video. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Singapore's freaking hot. Uh, if I start sweating in the video, you know why. It's because it's really hot. All right, let's talk about some camera equipment you should get before you get a gimbal. And I say this as a beginner filmmaker who has gotten a gimbal before I got on all these things and ended up not using this gimbal enough to justify this purchase. So this video is a PSA, a warning, and a cautionary tale. Ah! Just the framing, how, how the framing look? Look good? So first thing you should get instead of a gimbal, some good lenses, all right? Get, some, get yourself some good lenses. You know, I'm not saying expensive lenses, I'm saying get yourself some good lenses. This is a 15 millimeter Nikkor F1.4 lens. Like, look at that, it's beautiful, it's, it's fast. You know, it's, it's gorgeous. You can see my eye? Yeah. Anyway, it's a beautiful piece of glass. It cost me a hundred dollars, like a hundred Singapore dollars to buy. Second hand, it's a vintage, super old lens. It's manual focus and all that, but just learn to manual focus, it's not that hard. Manual focus, all right, but it's fast. It gives beautiful background blur and it, it looks stunning. And because it's an old lens, it's got weird coatings on there with unique images. You know, you've got unique flares, unique reflections with this lens because of its old lens. It adds a lot of character to your footage, adds a lot of character to your shots. So it looks very, very nice as opposed to these clean, modern looking lenses. Okay, number two, it's definitely 
Microphones, audio is essential. In fact, I think this will be the number one on the list in terms of priority. I'm not doing it in any particular order of importance. Get yourself some good audio equipment. Think about audio equipment, you can always sell them. If you decide you don't wanna do video anymore, you can always sell them because audio equipment really doesn't depreciate in price because the quality doesn't really drop. The thing about audio is that if you get yourself a good mic uh, in like five years, you can still sell it for 80% of the price. If you buy yourself like a really good mic, especially like the Sennheiser MKH416 hasn't re been replaced at all for like 10 years, 15 years now. You, if you bought one 15 years ago, you probably can sell it for 80% of what you bought, bought it for today, which is insane because uh, audio equipment doesn't depreciate. It's a good investment and it's something that will exponentially increase the quality of your videos. In fact, uh, audio, my, the audio of my videos suck. I'm constantly working to try to improve it, but I don't have any money to buy anything fa particularly fancy now, so it's all about working with what I have. Okay, next thing you should buy before a gimbal. Now this one is less of a image quality, performance improvement. This one's more of a principle kind of thing. It's more batteries and more SD cards. Why? Because if you don't have enough batteries, you don't have enough SD cards, means you aren't shooting enough. If you're just only, if you only have one battery, all right, and you're shooting on one battery and you're shooting on one SD card that's like 64 gigs, you're not shooting enough, all right? If you only, if you only have one battery, it means you're not prepared for your shoot, you're not prepared for, for shooting a lot, you're not prepared for practicing, and if you wanna get good, you're never gonna get there not practicing. You know, you gotta, you gotta do your daily uploads, you gotta shoot as much as you can, get more batteries, get more SD cards. It's a matter of principle. Even if you end up, you know, not using it because your camera's battery life is phenomenal, or it starts raining and you have to go home. It's just a matter of principle. The fact that you were prepared to shoot for hours and hours and hours on end is important. It's a mindset thing, and if you wanna improve, you gotta get in the right mindset, get yourself enough batteries, enough SD cards to get into the groove of things. Number three, number four is lights. Lights are essential because uh, when it comes to cameras, what they basically do is record the light that hits the sensor, right? And that's your image. The recording of the light that hits your sensor can only be as good as the light you hit it with. So when you get, give a good light, you know, good soft light, a good image, you're gonna get nice images. But if you hit it with a crappy, harsh light that looks like this, ah, uh, that's my shades, it's gonna re result in a crappy image, it's gonna clip and all that. Look, people want dynamic range, people want red raw inside the cameras. The thing is, if you know what you're doing, lighting your images, you know, getting, setting up the shots, looking for the image, right? Looking for the blocking, the framing, and things like that then you will be able to get a nice image no matter how crappy your camera is. iPhone camera or DSLR, as long as you know what you're doing with lighting, you often can get an image that's much better. Someone with a gimbal. And finally, the last thing that I think everyone needs to get is a good tripod. Now my tripod isn't phenomenally good. It's a Benro one, but it's got a nice Benro S4 head on that. So it allows me to do some smooth pans and tilts, which is good enough. It's strong enough to support my camera for now. And uh, in the future, I wanna upgrade my camera legs, obviously, but for now, it gets the job done. But just get something that is decent. Of course, if you can spend a couple hundred dollars on some secondhand Manfrotto legs with a 502 HD head, it probably will last you another five years. So that's a pretty good investment. Benro, Benro is your friend. Benro is one of those brands with a lot of good value for money. Benro, Surue, Wayfair, E-Image, they have a lot of good tripod stuff out there. You got good tripod heads, you got good tripod legs. Get yourself a decent one, read some reviews, get one that's good enough for you, and you'll be much better off than if you just had a gimbal. You know why? Because uh, as much as those YouTubers who keep screaming about camera movements being cinematic like to scream, it, the locked off shot is the basis of cinematography. You know, you lock off your camera, you frame, you light, you set everything up, you plan where the actors will be, you block the shot, plan the colors, you plan the scheme, you plan the, the darkness, the contrast ratio with a locked off camera before you even think about camera move. Of course, camera movement is beautiful and done well, it is unbelievably cinematic. Look at 1917, the movie, but you can win an Oscar with a tripod and a camera. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys found it helpful or liked it or you know enriching or you like the conversation about filmmaking, please like and subscribe. I do daily uploads now. I talk about everything under the sun, but the main focus is gonna be technology and cameras and filmmaking and uh, I think there's a lot of overlap in those fan bases, so that be sure to subscribe for that. Follow me on Instagram and Discord if you have any questions, I reply to them anywhere. Like legitimately, if you have any questions, just, just ask me, all right? Just ask me, 
comments, anywhere, I reply to them. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.